What those characters are speaking isn't gibberish. It's actually a language called Dothraki. And it was invented by this guy, David Peterson, in lovely Orange County, California. David Peterson is what we call a conlanger, an inventor of languages. Conlanging is the intentional creation of a full language, creating its full grammar, its full phonology, its writing system if it has one, and its entire lexicon. David has written many languages, but the first one he wrote was back in 2000. I was taking an intro linguistics class at UC Berkeley in 2000, and it was just one day during class I started scribbling on my notes my very first language. He named it after his girlfriend. Meg Davy. And according to David himself? It's irredeemably awful. It's just not, it's not worth even considering anymore. Everything that I was doing with this language was just a kind of really fancy, bizarre way to speak English. So I kind of just started over and said, all right, ground zero, how do I be a language creator? Before we move forward, let's take a quick step back and talk about the godfather of modern conlanging, J.R.R. Tolkien. You probably know this name because he's the author of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. He created 14 different languages for use within Middle Earth. Quenya and Sindarin are probably his most famous. He was the very first person that we know of to create languages just for fun, and we've been kind of emulating him ever since. Now that we've cleared that up, we can move forward. We're here in California because we're curious about what it takes to create a successful language. David's having two of his friends who are also conlangers come over and speak with us. One of them brought ice cream. We were gonna do this outside, but it's too hot, so we're gonna do it inside. The three of them are talking about how languages are created, and they've come up with five steps. Take it away, guys. Oh, <laughs> so, all right. A naturalistic conlang needs five basic things. One, the people. What they do, who their neighbors are. The second thing that you're going to need is a phonology or sound system. Do you have voiced and voiceless consonants? Do you have aspirated consonants? Three, words. All the nouns, all the verbs, all the modifiers. Fourth, grammar. Which is the fun part. Finally, history. You need to know how the meanings of words changed over time, and you need to know how the grammar of your language evolved from a time in the distant past to what's used now. Now that we've got that settled, let's finish this. In the past 15 years, somebody who created language went from somebody who was like, oh, you're a nerd, to, you know, oh, wow, um, that's, that's really nerdy, which now means cool. <laughs> and its prolific use in television and film proves that it's not just a passing fancy. For television, the difference between a created language and some other set prop is that the maximum level of interaction that a viewer ever has with a background set or with a prop is just seeing it on screen. A language, on the other hand, uh, when you hear it, that's the, that's the most real a language ever gets. For that reason, you have to have a fully created language for a television show and not just a bunch of gibberish. Was that good? That was great. Thank God. Hello. Normally when you think of words, they fit into a language. Bonjour. But there's a relatively new class of words that don't quite follow the rules, and it's called Wasayego. John Kelly is a language writer. I spend a lot of my time writing about word origins. He's a linguistics expert, and he knows just about everything about the phenomenon called Wasayego. Wasei Ego literally means Japan-made English. It is a language process that takes foreign words, uh, usually English words, and transmogrifies them into something wholly new and novel for Japanese purposes. We see this with a word like karaoke. Everybody knows and everybody loves karaoke, but it joins the Japanese kara, which means empty, and oke, which is a Japanese rendering of orchestra. So a karaoke is an empty orchestra. The most popular example is the word Pokemon. The creator of Pokemon took two English words, pocket and monster. He smashed them together and got Pokemon. 
Or take cosplay, a word that describes people dressing up as fictional characters. Cosplay joins costume and play. And there's anime. Anime is a fairly straightforward rendering of the English animation. Wasi Ugo is important because language is always changing and reinventing itself. What new words will pop up in the future? Only time will tell. Mi nombre es Renata Flores, tengo 16 años, soy cantante y estoy tratando de preservar el idioma quechua. El quechua es un idioma de nuestros antepasados, los incas, y también es nuestra cultura. Y este idioma ahora se está perdiendo en el Perú. La gente eh, lo ve el, al quechua como al símbolo de, de pobreza o de discriminación. Si se pierde el quechua, también estaría propenso de, a desaparecer el Perú. Yo comencé cantando canciones eh, modernas en quechua, mayormente para los jóvenes puedan escucharlo, puedan eh, gustarles ¿no? y aprender el quechua. Las canciones que hemos traducido en quechua eh, fue el de Michael Jackson, el de Alicia Keys. La canción de Michael Jackson, The Way You Make Me Feel, tuvo más de un millón de visitas y fue como que, ay, no lo puedo creer. Está viendo cambios eh, al, al modo de, de pensar en este, este idioma, de parte de los jóvenes. Me gustaría eh, enseñar a las personas y seguir con este proyecto del quechua. My name is Yanis Ikonoma, I'm from Greece and I speak 32 languages. Russian, Portuguese, Norwegian, Turkish, Hungarian, Czech, Polish. Ayanis is what we call a hyper-polyglot. It means he can speak a lot of languages. By the time I was 20, I'd already learned some um, 15 languages. And when I moved to Brussels and started my career at the EU institutions, I added more official EU languages. See, the thing is, Ayanis, He's a quick learner. Ja, ich bin sehr neugierig von Natur aus und uh, Mama ich taula zimmer können, sie sie auch waiko uh, yuen. This doesn't happen by just sitting at home and studying though. No, claro que no. Hay que viajar mucho, hay que estar en contacto con la gente. Esto de la mía prekrasne upražnenie na etich jazykach. Bu eni metodiani jenibir dil örenmek. The world is a big place with different cultures and, yes, different languages. I live in Northern Spraken, in Northern Tallinn, and in Marinental. I speak to my husband in Polish because he's Polish. I dream in all kinds of languages. Parmi toutes ces langues que j'ai apprises, je peux comprendre notre vaste monde. Wait, wait. Before we go, if anyone knows, it's you. What is the most complicated language to learn? Mandarin. Mystery solved.